Did you ever stop to wonder how two brothers in the same family, with the same parents, the same circumstances, could turn out so differently? One is an excellent student, the other is forever teetering on the brink of academic failure. One grows up to be a solid citizen, the other one never grows up, he is a perpetual adolescent. In the famous 15th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, our Lord tells the story of two such brothers. One is immature, impetuous, irresponsible. He wanters his share of the family fortune. He goes into a far country and squanders it all. Comes back broke, beaten and badly depressed. The other is quite different. He is wise, industrious, dependable. He keeps the rules and stays home. If he were alive today, he would be a member of the Rotary Club or perhaps in the parish council. When we read the story of the prodigal son, we think of the prodigal son as the failure in the family, the black sheep, the ne'er do well, while the elder brother is the ill-tempered one, the grouch, but not really a sinner. I doubt if our Lord would think like that. For him, the sins of the elder brother were more terrible. Not that he belittled in any way the gross sins of the flesh, they are deadly and destructive. For so are the sins of the spirit, what we call the respectable sins. They do not exclude one from polite society, but they are just as common. When you read the morning paper, you would think that the crimes of lust and violence are taking over the world. Whereas we never read about pride, or selfishness, or coldness, or indifference. And these sins are far more common. For every prodigal out there in the world today, there are 12 elder brothers. For every evil deed that is done, there are 100 good deeds that could be done and should be done and are not done. For every crime of violence, there are a hundred crimes of indifference. The sins of the spirit are more subtle, more difficult to get at. You know, there is many a prodigal out there in the world at this moment, driven there by the haughtiness of the elder brother. Because you and I do not have to attack people physically or verbally to wound them. We can do that with our condescending attitude, with our superior attitude, with our coldness. Rudyard Kipling, the English poet of the First World War, wrote a few lines about the two brothers. I never was very refined, you see and it weighs on my brother's mind, you see. But there's no reproach among swine, you see, for being a bit of a swine, driven out by the haughtiness of others. But one thing the prodigals of the world have in common, they know they are sinners, they are aware of their failure, and they feel the need of repentance and forgiveness while the rest of us, with our self-sufficiency, we are maybe abominable in the sight of God. Many years ago, I saw Alec Guinness in a play called The Cardinal. It was probably based on the story of Cardinal Minzenti. He was accused of every crime in the book. Before he entered the seminary, while he was in the seminary, as a young priest, he was able to say before God, 
he was not guilty of any of those crimes. Before his God, he was sinless. And then one day, scrubbing the floor of his cell in the prison, he was saying the De Profundis, from the depths I cry to you, O Lord. And it suddenly dawned on him that yes, he was not guilty of those heinous crimes because he was guilty of a far more terrible crime, the sin of pride. How easy it is for you and me to be blind to the sinfulness that fills our poor souls. Alexander Solzhenitsyn tells the story of his friend, his soulmate, with whom he shared his dreams, his ideals. And then after the war, his friend became a member of the KGB and was guilty of the most heinous crimes. And Alexander Solzhenitsyn asked himself, how could my friend descend so low? And he thought, if I were in the same place, at the same time, under the same circumstances, I too might have joined the KGB and done those horrible deeds. As Dickens said, there is so much bad in the best of us and so much good in the worst of us that it ill becomes any of us to speak about the rest of us. We are all sinners, the prodigal and the elder brother, and we are all in need of God's forgiveness and God's compassion and God's love. And so we turn to Our Lady and we say in the words of the Church, O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us sinners, in love with our sins, unwilling to give up our sins. Pray for us now and the hour of our death. Amen. God bless you.